In just the last 10 years, we have produced more plastic than was produced in the entire 20th century. And we are expected to double that production by 2040. What happens to all that plastic? Sure, we've all heard that it sits in landfills and is floating in our oceans. But did you know we're also eating it? Disturbingly, each person will consume about 40 pounds of plastic during their life. But what if instead of eating it, we could walk all over it? In today's preview, we're talking to Patrick Casey from Arclight, a solution that turns plastic into smart gravel. I am your host, Mike Lake, and this is Preview of Tomorrow. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, President and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Hello and welcome, Patrick. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, on Preview of Tomorrow. And, and of course, I do want to take a moment to welcome all of our guests, those listening and viewing. Um, I'd love to introduce you to uh, Patrick Casey. Patrick is the Financial Operations Manager for Arclight. Arclight is a company that combines a recycling service and manufacturing process to transform plastic waste into new materials. So Patrick, before we dive in, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, absolutely, Michael. And hey, thank you for inviting me. You know, it's exciting to be a part of this Excel City and challenge and really promote Arclade as a, as a large scale solution. Um, a little bit about me. I grew up in the Boston area, traveled to New York, graduated uh, from Syracuse University and spent the years uh, I guess, honing out my skills at Morgan Stanley to eventually end up in this position where I joined an excellent team here at, uh, at Arclight. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, you know, to kind of jump in and talk about what we're doing. But, you know, from my end, uh, I've, I first saw Arclight a few years ago as a sustainability company, and I really wanted to join that space. And the mission that we'll, we'll talk about is, is honestly what, what drove me uh, right into the arms of uh, Sebastian and you know, made me move from New York City all the way to L.A. a uh, better part of a year ago. So I'm not going to hold it against you from leaving Boston in the first place. Of course, that's where we're located. Uh, so you're forgiven. But uh, it's for a good cause. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if my family will ever forgive me, but, you know, at least I get one person <laughs> in the area. So at the start. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I... Clearly, plastic is a problem, right? I, I mean, I think many of us, if not all of us, understand that. I mean, it has brought great conveniences to our lives. There's no doubt about that. But it is an environmental disaster. Um, I do know that we talk about the fact that every bit of plastic that's ever been made is still in existence today. Um, that on average, a dump truck full of plastic enters the ocean every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes. Um, we've seen images of that essentially island of plastic that's in the middle of the ocean. I mean, plastic is a problem. So tell me a little bit more from your perspective. How big a problem is this? Um, what is the problem? How would you define that? Well, it's it's massive. Um, I mean, just, just to kind of back up a bit, we're, we're looking at, you know, some projections have anywhere between 330 million tons to you know, potentially up to 400 million tons of plastic being produced globally at this moment. And that's massive. Only like 9% of it is actually upcycled and recycled. So what leaves the remaining 91% depends on you know, the setup of the area. It, unfortunately, we're developing countries. They, they have great technology to kind of collect and process and sort but the end result still ends up being bailed up and sent to landfills or incinerators and in poor developing countries that are trying to get up an attraction and maybe not have the appropriate infrastructure. A lot of the plastic ends up in garbage dumps. And, and unfortunately, you know, those may be our short term solution, but they're not a long term solution. Right. We, we're, we're deforesting land in order to increase capacity so we can pile a bunch of plastic in the ground and bury it in the dirt or or we're incinerating it, which is releasing carbon emissions to the, to the environment. And I'm sure there are techniques and technologies that are improving that area, but still, you know, the optics don't look that great. And for us, we're, we're really targeting 
you know, how can we make an improvement? We, we have all these wonderful ideas, NGOs that can collect, but what happens once we collect it? And I think that's the biggest issue is that we don't have a real, real process to upcycle it and turn it into plastics. And, and what we're doing is we're focusing on the unrecyclable plastics. And with plastics in general, when you upcycle it, you typically have to break it down by resin type. Um, and that's kind of where ArcLay comes in. We really focus on, okay, well, what can we do with the plastics we're not able to break down to very particular resin types? What, what do we do with that? So that, that's a big issue for us. And all the statistics show that it's only going to double. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the saturation from, you know, plastic spillover into our environment, enters our waterways. And as you say, you know, all the plastics ever created are still available, are still around. They don't degrade. It, it, they just break down into microplastics, which get into our food supply, our water supply. And the scary statistic is kind of nasty is that we consume about a credit card's worth of microplastics each week. Oh, that's just disgusting. So that's kind of the, the thrust of everything. We, we really want to find a solution for that. You know, how can we tackle such a massive problem? So what you're saying is that next time I'm hungry, I can just eat a credit card? I mean, <laughs> hey, I wouldn't advise it, but yeah, I guess you could. <laughs> But actually, it's funny you bring that up because uh, just having a conversation with somebody about the increase in, in allergies. And uh, one theory is that the microplastics that we're consuming is adding to this increase in allergies that we see, you know, peanut allergy or nut allergies in general uh, was the conversation that started it. But I mean, it's not just the disgusting idea of consuming a credit card's worth of plastic every week. But um, the the long term implications, the health implications of that as well. Yeah, it's it's disturbing. It is honest. disturbing. That's and the best word for it. So no. let's dive into to ArcLight because th this is the bright spot. This is this is where we we talk about how things get better. Yeah, so, it's definitely something where we're we're looking forward to to you know tackling. Um, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, I can, sorry, you can continue. I, I was just going to say you, you touched a little bit on, on ArcLight, but l dive deeper. Explain to all of us exactly what it is you do and, and uh, how you do it. Awesome. I can't yeah. wait. So, you know, at, at ArcLight, you know, I've already told you about the big problem. That, that's our target. Um, and so the idea was generated of, okay, well, how can we solve this problem? How can we solve such a massive problem and find a scalable solution, but also find a, an endpoint where – the solution can be scalable and serve large industries. So ArcLight itself, we're an innovative technology company. We've designed a patented technique to really dive into, or I should say patent pending technique. Let's just keep that color there. Um, but we designed a, a thing that we can take plastic waste, mix plastic waste, and convert it into usable products. And so what we've decided is that, you know, with construction industry, infrastructure projects, building material space is just such a high volume of opportunity and it, the applications can range. So what ArcLight has done is developed our first product, which is a smart gravel. And it's basically a light aggregate that is entirely made from plastic waste. So instead of mining gravel from the earth to dump into you know whatever infrastructure project or anything you in matter of fact, it, you could use that to the mining operation be landfills. Um, you know, it's it's a one for one replacement. So on one side, um, ArcLight is a service to waste generators. You know, we interject ourselves at the intersection between when everything is sorted and plastics are compiled together. And before they get sent to the landfills, we work with waste generators to get it sent to us. So that could be like, you know, material cycling facilities or even on the industrial side, post-industrial or... new avenue that these corporations or these entities can send the waste and get processed. And on the flip side, the end product that we produce services a large range of operations. So, you know, our first product is a, is a gravel. It's competes against mineral gravel, expanded clay, expanded shale, um, and it can be used in various applications. So from concrete, such as light concrete walls, precast concrete benches, park benches, I mean, you can kind of range it out there roadway construction, 
hmm. uh, green rooftops. Uh, it, it goes from drainage, hydroponics, gardening, even to the home user. And you know the applications are wide because at the end of the day, what we did is we didn't try to invent a new product that would have to take a lot of education and work up. It's it's replicating a rock. And wherever you would use that rock in a filler agent, that's where you can use ours. And that, that's kind of where we've intersected both this big problem, our solution, and then the end product, hoping that everything combined, you know, as we scale, the, the solution scales. And so does our impact to the problem. You know, it's interesting because uh, so often in, in the world that I, I work in here and, and when we talk about plastic, one of the real problems with it is that it lasts a thousand years or more. Um, but you've actually harnessed that problem and, and used it as a benefit uh, so that it can be used in building material without deteriorating um, quickly. Uh, it's, an, it's an interesting twist on the problem of pl plastic. It is. And, you know, I think I should mention it. Um, actually, I'll, I'll show you guys. So this is uh, this is what it is. It's smart gravel. We have a few different gradient sizes, but at the end of the day, this, this used to be a bunch of plastic waste. And, mm -hmm. you know, with it, it, it's lighter. It's three times lighter. It's a better insulator than mineral gravel. It doesn't produce dust. So there's so many additional benefits outside of just the impact capability of literally turning something that had no value that was bundled up and sent and buried or burned to now actually being, well, we can reuse it. We, we don't need to necessarily rely on virgin material as much. And I think that's the next iteration. And, you know, trying to get a full upcycle and recycling con economy and, and full swing here, it's only going to protect the future for all of us. Oh, no doubt. So we, you've talked about more kind of uses for it in the uh, in construction industry, let me say. Um, but do you see opportunities either now or in the future for home use, you know, in gardening, small scale projects, you know, things like that? Absolutely. So uh, you can actually use it in the bottom of your pots and plants. You can use it in your home projects. You know, it, it's, it has a wide range of applications to it. And at the end of the day, we do have a lot of consumers already using it in their pots and plants. And, you know, something to show you kind of looks something like this. You can have the drainage on the bottom so that way your roots don't rot. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. And with hydroponics, it's a completely different, different play in itself. And it's a great substrate to use. Mm. And it allows your roots to grow. Um, it doesn't produce dust. So it, it, it kind of keeps your systems really operating efficiently. And it's lightweight. I cannot mention that enough. Imagine picking up a heavy pot with a bunch of rocks in the bottom. The pot weighs way more. Now it's at least we're cutting down a little bit of weight. So <laughs> helping out well, everybody. And, and it just occurred to me that weight issue, especially when you're talking about large scale construction type projects. I mean, you have a shipping issue um, if you're using gravel or stone. Uh, in the the weight side of things, because of course it's going to create more carbon emissions, hauling a heavier load. Um, so the the impact is is truly phenomenal. It's it a is. ripple effect. A hundred percent. And so our our idea is we're going to place facilities near urban centers, so we're close to where the waste is generated, but also where a lot of infrastructure projects are going on too. And if you look at from like what you just mentioned, the construction side. They have to get their material from quarries. So depending on where you're at, you may not have a readily available access to a large quarry to grab a lot of your material from. So you always have to ship it out. And there are roadway, there's road like restrictions on terms of weight that they can put down. So you know you you might have to use more trucks than you necessarily need to get the same volume. So that's kind of where we're hoping that that ancillary benefits come in to play. Like. Yeah, using our products, you can, you know, improve the efficiency, it's lighter weight, so it's easier to handle, it's easier to move around, and it's easier to work with, you know, for the most part. Fantastic. Well, as is always the case, our time goes by way too fast, but I do want to ask you, uh, you know, in, in a kind of a closing statement here, looking to the future, and you've covered a little bit, but I want to give you the opportunity to paint the picture big and bright for us, you know, 10, 20, whatever, 50 years down the road. Arclight has replaced all that traditional use of, of uh, stone and, and gravel and whatnot. Um, it's using existing plastic to do it. 
what's the impact? Give us a sense. What does it mean for the individual or for, for the world at large? I, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity to take back a lot of the plastics that would end up in the landfill and end up ending during our waterways. Um, it's the impact is, you know, finding a new way to reuse something that hasn't. So if, if you know, looking down the year 20, 20, 30 years down the line, you know, our objective isn't just to have gravel. It's also have other products made out of plastic waste that are built for the built environment. So that way you have more, con more capabilities and maybe there's different applications with different types of uh, products that we're going to be hopefully generating here in the next couple of years. So the impact is massive. Um, it, it, we just, we know that the issue is not going away. Plastic is an incredible product. You know, it's incredible in medical industry. You, you can form it to whatever you want, but it, so good and so durable that it doesn't degrade. So we need to find a way and ArcLight can be a serious solution that can scale and that can be a really con large contributor to cutting down the plastic waste that enters our, our environment. Well, well said. I know there's so much more to talk about, uh, <laughs> but uh, tell us this at least, you know, for anybody who does want to learn more, perhaps purchase uh, some of the product. Um, What's the best way to learn more about ArcLight or get in touch with you guys? Okay, well, for sure, absolutely visit our website. It's arclight.com. We have Instagram. We have Facebook. Uh, you can always contact us at, contact us at info at arclight.com. Someone from our team will come out and talk to you if you're interested in purchasing. Uh, we have a few different channels. If you're a large corporation, I suggest reaching out to info at arclight.com. Our contact information is also on the website. But if you're a home user, go to Amazon, go to Home Depot, go to Walmart. We're already online on those places. And we're, we're working on continually improving and trying to get into your local nursery, hydroponic stores. So, you know, stay tuned. We're, we're growing and we'll keep you guys updated. But yeah, I would, I would definitely suggest doing, uh, reaching out to our info at Arclight and going to our website and checking out our social media. Well, Patrick, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and, and doing such a great job telling us and informing us about ArcLight and, and this challenge that we're all facing. And, and please extend our thanks to the whole team for the incredible work you're doing. Appreciate it, Michael. And yes, I, 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 same here. Like I, I'm so happy to join. Uh, we're, we're glad to be a part of this incredible cohort in Excel City. It's, it's quite inspiring to see all the innovations and just such bright-minded individuals all tackling different challenges and such unique solutions. So, you know, thank you for the support. Thank you for having me on. Uh, this, is, this is an incredible opportunity and we're grateful. Well, we're happy to, and honored to have you. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guest today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.